the Ducks are getting very close to breaking an all-time record. We'll talk about that on this edition of Locked On Anaheim Ducks. Your Locked On Ducks, your daily podcast on the Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jason J.D. Hernandez. Been covering hockey for over a decade. Thank you for making this your first listen or watch of the day. And just a reminder that you can find this podcast on any streaming platform like YouTube and ad-free on Amazon. So check us out there. My personal Twitter is at StimpyJD. Voila. And the show's Twitter is at LO underscore Ducks. Let's get right into it. So... We're getting close to seeing the Ducks breaking a dubious record that apparently a lot of you weren't really aware of because I all of a sudden got a bunch of just different messages like, wait, how come we haven't talked about this particular record? Well, (laughs) it turns out that when I tweet about it, I get messages about this. So let me just track back to something that I've kind of shared on the podcast but I hadn't tweeted about it. And it's that graphic that I put up every once in a while about the most shots in one season in NHL history. As of right now, you know what? I'm just going to put up the latest updated graphic. So, bam, there it is. Yeah, the Ducks are close. There are 30 shots allowed away from breaking the all-time record for most Shots allowed in a season. And by the way, I'm using this graphic now because, look, let's let's be real here. The Ducks defense has been non-existent. Although, the defense was a little bit better on this game against the Edmonton Oilers. They only gave up 33 shots. Yeah, only. But they're getting close. 30 away in fewer games. It's bad, folks. The Ducks are not only going to break this record, they're going to shatter this record because they're 30 shots away with still four. Four games left. That is a lot. At this rate, they would have to average seven and a half shots per game to tie the mark, but that's not going to happen. They're playing Arizona next. They're probably going to beat that record against the Coyotes. So I think that's going to happen. And then after that, they'll probably allow another 100-plus more goals. They could get to 3,200 shots allowed in a season, which would be far and away the most. So when you talk about breaking records, you know, breaking records would be like, oh, they could get like 3,080-something, 3,090-something. No, they're going to clear this by a lot. And frankly, I'm surprised they didn't, go further up and pass Washington in this game. Because, like I said, only allowing 33 shots against the Oilers, that's kind of lucky, folks. That's not too bad. And I've talked about this record a couple of times on this podcast. But, again, this goes without saying. This is a mark that's going to get just blown out of the water. And it's a testament to how much John Gibson... Anthony Solars, and Lukas Dostal has been working. In fact, Dostal is approaching the Ducks' rookie record for most saves in a season. Wow. And Dostal's played in fewer... He's played in fewer games than a lot of Ducks' goaltending rookies of the past. And he's probably going to break that record because I expect Dostal to get the majority of starts at the very end. And the main reason is the backup for this game was not who you thought it was. Ole Eriksson Ek got called up to the Ducks. Let me repeat that. The backup for this game was Ole Eriksson Ek. And he's certainly not going to get any starts for the Ducks this season. So it wouldn't surprise me at all. If Dostal gets the last four starts of the season, like only four games left, Dostal should get the majority of starts. And it's not his fault. It's really not his fault. Gibby has done a great job. Dostal's done a tremendous job 
Dostal could have given up a couple a couple more goals and it would have been a quote unquote normal game for him. And that's fine. But to see this mark just completely blown out of the water, it's distressing. Distressing is the word I'm going to use here, Ducks fans, because look, this is not supposed to be where the Ducks were right now. The Ducks were supposed to be further along in this rebuild, and they're not. They've regressed. Now, to be fair, the Ducks still do have the worst record in the National Hockey League as of this moment. They still have the best odds to land Connor Bedard, and that would be a massive get for the Ducks. So I'm trying to look at this as half glass full as possible, and it, it's difficult. It is difficult to talk about this. You know, I'm not here reveling at this record. It, it sucks. It absolutely sucks. It, it shows just how far back the Ducks have gone from season to season. And I would consider this a lost season, not just for the Ducks, but I would consider this a lost season organizationally because the Ducks are out of the playoffs. The San Diego Goals, they're dead last in the league. The Tulsa Oilers, they're dead last in their division. They're almost dead last in the league. Almost. But this is up and down the organization. It's it's bad. And pretty much every one of those teams, as I mosey back, bam, Every one of those teams has been struggling mightily this season. And, you know, I've said it before. I'll say it again. Changes are going to happen. They're going to occur big time. All right. We're going to head into the first intermission and talk about the game that was. We'll get to that on the other side. But first, I want to talk to you guys about FanDuel because the NBA and NHL playoffs are almost here. And now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because new customers get a no-sweat first bet of up to $1,000 back. That's 1000 bucks in bonus bets if your first bet does not win. Just download the app. It's safe, secure, super easy to use. Especially with the NHL playoffs coming up. Who's going to win the Stanley Cup? Is it going to be the heavy favorite Boston Bruins? Well, if you believe in the President's Cup curse or the President's Trophy curse, maybe you don't put money on the Bruins. Maybe you put money on, I don't know, maybe the Hurricanes. Who knows? So, don't miss out on your chance to get your no-sweat first bet of up to $1,000 back in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the Locked On Podcast Network. And please gamble responsibly. Welcome back to Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Once again, you're locked in with Jason J.D. Hernandez. Let's talk about the game that was between the Anaheim Ducks and the Edmonton Oilers. Spoiler alert, the Ducks do not lose 6-0 in this game. Hallelujah. At least the Ducks did not get embarrassed in this game. In fact, you are ready for me to say this? This is the kind of team that I want to see the Ducks become in the future. Yes, I know it was a loss, but just go with me on this. I want to see this version of the Ducks team that put in a little bit more effort and had some better results for the most part as far as team defense, as far as goaltending, as far as actually forechecking and holding Edmonton to one shot in like a seven-minute span. And even the first period, there were not that many shots against for the Ducks. So I have to give credit where credit is due. The defense looked good. Yeah, I, I know, right? I actually said it. The offense, it didn't look bad. It really didn't. Just that, you know, Jack Campbell was kind of on a pretty decent streak on this game. And Lukash Dostal did play on another level. He did only give up two goals in this game. I thought he was good. 
Dostal did not deserve the loss. In fact, looking at hockey stack cards right now, the only player with a good game score for the Ducks was Lukas Dostal with a 1.18 on the positive side. His season average is about normal. So again, I give credit where credit is due. Lukas Dostal, really good stats, including the micro stats in his game. The expected goals in this one, according to Nat Statrick, 4.05 to 2.15 in favor of you-know-who. Of course, it's the Oilers. So for the expected goals to be that high, but one of them coming on an empty net, then I would say Dostal had a good game. And my favorite moment of this game was not the Ducks goal. Yes, I know Troy Terry did score, and I love me some Troy Terry, and he's now tied for the team lead in goals. Loved that goal. But can we talk about the stellar save at the end of the first period and Lukas Dostal just going on God mode at that point? Yeah, I love that one. With about four or five seconds left in the period, the Ducks somehow get caught, you know, just playing pretty crappy offense on the power play. Oh yeah, no surprise to you that the power play was 0 for 1 on this game. And also no surprise that they nearly gave up a short-handed goal. Again. Yes, I said again. The Ducks are adept at giving up shorties. They're adept at having poor just judgment as far as trying to make those cross-ice passes at the wrong time. The wrong time. And then you have Nurse coming in. Yeah, I know. Uh, the the lesser of the popular Nurse family. I mean, Sarah Nurse, I think, is tremendous and should get all the awards. But Darnell Nurse came so close to putting away a puck at the end of the first period. And Lukas Dostal just went God mode. The bakery was closed shut at the end of the first period. Mwah! Chef's kiss. Loved it. That kept it 0-0 at the end of one period, but then Clem Costin and Nick Bukestad scored both goals for Edmonton. How about that third line for the Oilers? They looked pretty good. I mean, when you have McDavid and company not working out, when you have that top line not working... It's a good sign for the Oilers that the third line is beginning to step up more. So this could be dangerous for the Oilers. Hey, Edmonton could still get the number one overall seed. Let me repeat that for everybody in the back. The Edmonton Oilers, believe it or not, could still get the number one seed in the West for this playoff especially if Vegas loses a couple of their final games at the end of the season, then, hey, you know what? You never know. I mean, the Kings could too, but they've got a tougher road. It's going to be between Vegas and Edmonton. And I don't think Kings fans would mind seeing Vegas in that first round. I don't think they'd mind at all. So that could still happen. Yeah. But going back to just Darnell Nurse getting stopped. This is a testament to how hardworking and how good Lukas Dostal has been this season, despite the circumstances. If it wasn't for Dostal, it would have been four to one or five to one. And I feel like a broken record when I say that because of the goalies, in particular Dostal, if it wasn't for Dostal, the scores would be a lot more lopsided. So got to give props where props is due. But, you know, only one goal, that ain't going to cut it. So final score on this one was 3-1 to one after Zach Hyman scored an empty netter late in the game. And, oh, by the way, how about that unselfishness from Connor McDavid on that 3-on-1 with an empty net? Ryan Nugent Hopkins passed it to McDavid. They, like, they had a back and forth. Then McDavid saw Zach Hyman to his right, fed it to him unselfishly. So McDavid 
with yet another point. He's at 148. He's going to hit 150 points this season. That is insanity. Oh my God, that's insane. All right, we're going to head into the second intermission. Talk slightly more about this last game. And yeah, I'll talk about just, you know, what's coming up next. Stay locked in. But I want to talk to you guys right now about Indeed. And Indeed is, you know, a great website, which is a just a hiring platform that all businesses should use. Absolutely. You should use it. It's a hiring platform where you can attract interview and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you could do it all with Indeed. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like matching assessments and virtual interviews. Hate waiting. Indeed's US data shows over 80% of Indeed employees, employers rather, find quality candidates. So, Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. That's Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not, ap- not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Welcome back to Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Once again, you're locked in with Jason J.D. Hernandez. Just talked about that last game against the Oilers. Uh, just a couple more things that I want to just get to really fast. First, I know I jokingly said that Leon Dreisaitl was going to score one against the Kings, three against the Ducks. Well, the second part didn't happen, but Dreisaitl did get a goal in last night's game against the Kings. So Dreisaitl now has 51 goals. McDavid still, you know, over like about a dozen clear of him. It's insane how good those two are. I just still cannot believe that one-two punch. They're going to be a tough out. As far as the Ducks are concerned, here's the good news. The Ducks have the worst record in the league. There are four games left. Their next game is not until Saturday against the Coyotes. Then they have the Colorado Avs on Sunday, Vancouver on Tuesday, the Kings on Thursday, and then that is it. That is the end of the season. The San Diego Goals have a couple of games after that on the road. And then that's it because Tulsa's done. Yeah. No more actually covering, you know, Ducks hockey games after the 15th. Ugh. Yeah. So I also want to mention that this tank squad that's going on right now. Yes, this is not what we were hoping for at the start of the season. I get that. But you have to look at the big picture here. Big picture is that you want to guarantee yourself a top three pick. If there was any time for Anaheim to just mess around big time with their roster and just throw crap at the wall, this is it. Now, would I like to see the Ducks beat the Coyotes? Absolutely. I said about a month ago that if the Ducks are going to win one more game this season, let it be against the Coyotes. And you know what? I think I'm going to... Stand by that. Well, I'll see how I feel on Friday. Because here are the games of importance for Thursday. The Columbus Blue Jackets take on the New Jersey Devils at The Rock. That's Thursday afternoon. Then we have another game of great importance. One that I'm going to be looking out for. The Chicago Blackhawks at the Vancouver Canucks. Hmm. Maybe Vancouver will suck even more that Chicago will win that game. So keep an eye out for that one. Then we have the Colorado Avalanche against the San Jose Sharks. So we are rooting for the Sharks to win. We're rooting for the Blackhawks to win. And we are rooting especially hard for the Blue Jackets to win as well. 
all those games are tomorrow. Friday, there's no games on the schedule. Yeah. Zero hockey games scheduled Friday, April 7th. What what exactly is the schedule makers thinking there? I don't know either. I don't. But that's what we've got coming up as far as the Ducks and as far as everyone else playing. So, yeah. Interesting to watch. Also interesting to watch just for shiggles is this Western race. The Colorado Avs, the Dallas Stars, and the Minnesota Wild are all tied at 98 points heading into Thursday's games. It's a toss-up. I honestly don't know which team is going to win the Central Division. I don't know who's going to be that number two seed. It's close. It can go either way. I I still give the slight edge to Dallas on this one, but Colorado is starting to pick it up, and they are beginning to get healthy at the right time. Always a dangerous combo when you're dealing with with the returning Stanley Cup champions. And with that, I think I'm going to end it right there. So once again, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, we're not done yet today. This is a doubleheader because we still do have goals Thursday to talk about. So coming up later, goals Thursday. Going to talk about San Diego and the fact that they are mathematically going to be worse than the league. So I'll talk about that. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Don't forget this podcast is free and available across all platforms. That includes YouTube, Amazon Prime. You could follow me on Twitter at StimpyJD. The show's Twitter is at LO underscore Ducks. You could drop me a line via email at LockedOnAnaheimDucks at gmail.com. Once again, thank you all for your continued support. It is so greatly appreciated. For Locked On Anaheim Ducks, I'm Jason J.D. Hernandez saying have a great rest of the day. Please remember to be safe out there, be kind to one another, and Ducks fly together.